Hi guys, Mark is speaking and this tutorial is going to cover tools for data visualization. So we're going to create a graphic that shows the rental fees in Leipzig. So we're going to start with the data. I have a simple Google Docs spreadsheet here with two columns. The first column is the district, which is the districts of Leipzig. The second column is the price. So in this data set, we don't have any geographical reference at all. But we can do something about this. And I will use a pretty cool add-on for Google Docs, which is called Geocode Cells. Therefore, I'm simply selecting the district column, which holds pretty much like addresses. And I go to Add-on Geocode Cells and click geocode selected cells. Now it's going to tell me that I am missing lat and long columns and it's going to create them for me. Now I have a pretty cool G-reference data set. So what we can do with this is we can export it as a CSV or a TSV, doesn't matter. I take um, CSV. Then I'm switching to After Effects and I can import this CSV file. Note that it just needs to have a pair of columns for latitude and longitude. You can call it lat, long, lawn, or latitude, longitude, something like this. Now that it's imported, we can have a look into this. First, I don't like that each feature is named just feature. And um, we can simply fix this. So I'm going to the feature properties, and you can see that it has two properties, which is the district and the price. And if I select the district and click the name features by property district button, um, you see that each feature inside our file is named correctly. And now the very cool stuff comes up. So I'm going to my feature style editor and I'm going to create a new style. And call it rental fee. Since the geometries are all points, I don't need a fill, but I want to have a stroke color. And all these settings can now be data driven. So if I want to change my color according to the price, so I can click the little icon here and it opens up settings for data driven styling. I can type in a property name, which is price in my case. Now we need to define a value range. Therefore, I'm going to have a look at my data set. So the lowest number is 4.56. The highest one is 10.37. So let's go ahead. I'm going to start with four. I'm going to type in six here and I will add entries till we're at 12. Now I can define colors. The icon top right indicates that this style now is data driven. We can also add this to other properties. So my width should go from about five pixels to maybe 30, between a value of four to 12 on the price property. And also the extrusion. You can disable the data-driven style for this setting if you click the icon again. Right now I'm selecting all my features here and add our style and you see that a different color according to the price is applied. Now let's draw this to a map and selecting the file jump to it. I'm going to zoom out a little bit and hit the draw button. If you have an extrusion enabled in any of the styles that is drawn, GLS will change the renderer to Cinema 4D. Um, if you're below CC270 it will change it to the ray trace render, which is very slow, so be careful. Let me rotate my map camp a little. And I'm gonna also scale it up. Now let me show you another cool thing concerning the labels. So if I open up a label template, I take place top here. You can tell GLayers to insert certain properties of the feature. Do this by typing in the property name in curly brackets. So I'm going to do district and the price. And there we go. That's all. If I now label one of the features, those properties get inserted. 
I'm going to change the height here to fit at the top. I'm going to also label the lowest one. Now let's animate this. I'm going to select all of my shape layers, hitting S to open up the scale property. And I'm going, I'm jumping to 30 frames, keyframe the scale, go to zero seconds with the current time indicator and changing the Z scale to zero. Now I'm going to select all those keyframes, hit F9, and I'm changing the incoming velocity to 100%. I'm going to trim all those layers to one frame, go to animation, keyframe assistant, sequence layers, don't do any overlap and hit OK. After that, just extend them again. And I'm slightly changing the X rotation over time. To make this look even more interesting, I'm adding a light. GLAs automatically sets up the shape layers to cast shadows, so you don't need to change it on every individual shape layer. And there we go, that's a pretty neat looking visualization of the rental fees in Lightsay. Thanks for watching, have a great day, bye!